Hello, buddy. It's me, Ross, and welcome to another video. Today, we're talking all things goalkeepers. I'm joined by Bloomers and Mark as we talk about the Christian Walton situation. Uh, Brighton have excised the reco option with him, but he's still at town. Bloomers and Mark, I want to get their thoughts on this situation. I want to go over to Mark first. Um, Walton, would you be sad to see him go if he does get go back and Brighton want to sell him? We can't sign him. What's your feelings on this at the moment? From what I've seen so far, I think Walton is a, a significant upgrade on what we've currently got. Uh, I think you need to build a strong spine to a team, starting with a good goalkeeper, because I think a good goalkeeper can save you 9 to 12 points a season. I like Walton. I like what I've seen so far. I think his kicking still needs a little bit of work. I don't think his distribution is brilliant, but I do like the way that he commands his box and comes for crosses, which is something we haven't seen from six foot nine Thomas Holy or Vaclav Hadkli so far. So for that, I would definitely say yes, it's his time need to, to push the boat out and get this lad signed because he's 26. He's a good age for a goalkeeper. He's potentially got 10 years ahead of him. If we sign him up now for a reasonable fee, you know, he, he could be worth considerably more in a couple of years' time and we could sell him on and make a little bit of money if we had to. But no, I would say at the moment, yeah, sign him. I like him. I really do. He's the he's the best goalkeeper we've had, I think, for a number of years. He's the one that gives me the most confidence. And if I was playing in front of him, I think as a, as a centre-half, one of the three centre-halves, I'd be happy to have him behind me because I think he's big, he commands his area, and, you know, and he looks a commanding figure. Uh, which we haven't had for a while. So I think, yeah, definitely go for it. We need him. We need that spine. We need him in goal. We need Edmonds. We need Morsi. We need Bond. And we need to build around those team, that, those players, that spine. Definitely. And um, Bloomers, over to you. You were there in the rain in Kent when we won 4-0. Back-to-back -back clean sheets now for Walton. Uh, fans were calling, sign him up, sign him up. Um, he's out of contract this um, in in the summer at Brighton. Um, but what's your feelings on this? Oh, I thought that chance was for Macaulay Bond. Shows how much I was paying attention. Um, but both of them, both of them, pretty much. Uh, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Um, I I would be sad to see him go. I'll get that out first and foremost. Um, but I'm not sure I subscribe to the same theory that I don't think it would be as an extreme a bad thing as what you'd make out if you read what people say on Twitter. The majority of people say on Twitter. I'd be sad to see him go, but I don't think it's the be and end of one. I don't think it's the end of the world. Now I know that we haven't had like stability of the goalkeeper position since. Bartos Biakowski left in, I think, 2018. So it's been a while since we've had a real firm number one. But I'd be more upset and sort of worried if we didn't have a new manager in. It, it, because we've got a new manager in, you kind of almost have a fresh slate for every player. And that, that goes for loanees and, and people that are contracted to the club. And look, put it this way. Last month before uh, our new manager came in, Everyone was happy to see the back of James Norwood. Suddenly, four games, four goals later, and, and we've got a new manager, and everyone's saying that he'll be the focal point for the rest of the season. So these things can change very, very quickly. Now, do I think Walton is an, is an upgrade on the other two goalkeepers that we have, the two senior ones? Probably, yes, based on what we've seen this season. But I, I don't think that um, Vaclav Klagki's become a, a, a horrendous player overnight. It's a guy who won the League Two Golden Glove uh, last season and clearly has ability. And no, we haven't seen the best from him so far, but we've got a new management team in that are currently play 2-1-2. Two, two, and, you know, there's going to be confidence in the whole squad. And that probably extends to people that aren't finding themselves right at the top of the pegging order at the moment. So, yeah, OK, it would it would suck. But at the end of the day, there's precedent for this happening before. We've had good low knees in the past, like um, I remember like Neil Alexander going back and um, uh, Martin Fulop, I think, was on loan with us as well. Uh, and also well, others as well, whose names escape me, but they're the two that I can think of right now. You know, they go back at the end of the, the, halfway through a season or at the end of a season, and it suddenly doesn't mean that the, the team's completely changed overnight. So at the end of the day, this is a, a thing that's going to have been on the radar of the club for a while because he's always had that recall clause in. It's the same with McCauley Bond. Mm -hmm. If it happens, it's just a case of next man up, really. And And let's be honest, there's nothing that we've seen so far that would give you worry that uh the new manager or staff can't do that i know it's very very early days but let's just let's just wait and see because if it happens then no point stamping the feet about it if you want to sign him sign him but if he goes back then make the next man up bloomers can i throw a spanner in the works there okay. ask you a question now if if we if we let walton go and the, the you know if if he 
if the amazing happens and we get promoted, would you be happy with Hladky in the championship? Or would you would you think that we would need to strengthen in that area? I mean, I feel like that's kind of a it's a question that doesn't really need answering right now because we don't need we're not getting well, I don't think we're gonna make the playoffs. I think it's too much for Gatson to go up and if we do go up though then there's a it's a whole new ball game you know you, you look at five yeah. or six players that could get replaced you know if you want to upgrade your squad to compete in the sort of well let's say finishing 21st would be a success next season in the championship if we made it um so yeah like okay I pro- maybe he wouldn't be good enough but at the end of the day it's a problem you'd like to have and it's a problem we haven't got right now because you know we, first of all we need to get in the playoffs second of all we need to get promoted and actually, if that happens, Clagkey would have probably, hopefully, played a bit of a blinder. So there you go. He might be a different player by then. Definitely. And um, Mark, I wanted to bring in, um, I want to mention that those other lone goal kids have had David Stockdale, Asmir Begovic, who, you know, that's Asmir the one. Begovic, that's Thank the you. one. Begovic was, was unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah. Um, but the thing is, Walton is going to be on a Premier League contract. And if he signs permanently, I know we've got the money now, game changer, USA, USA, but that's going to be a lot of money, a lot of wages. And if we do sign him this January, the fee, well, if we don't want to go too much out of the way, because he's going to be out of contract this summer. So um, would you put all our, all the money there to Walton or would you rather spend it on other players? No, I, I wouldn't. I'd like to see him sign for a reasonable fee, an affordable fee that we could manage. Um, I'd be more upset if it was Edmondson or Morsey, and, you know, and they were on loan and we had to, to, to tie one of those down and I would Walton. I would love to get Walton signed, but I, I don't think I'd go as far as to break the bank for him because I do agree with Bloomers that, you know, if they pushed us that far and they were asking three and a half million, which I, somebody put on Twitter, which I think is ridiculous. But, you know, if it was a, a massively inflated uh, amount like that, I, I think there is a limit to, you know, to what we should spend on him. But I think for a reasonable amount of money, if the club could afford it. Yes, I would love to sign Walton. However, you know, there, I think there is a figure, and I'm pretty sure that the game changer crew know what that figure is. That we don't go above and beyond, and there's a way that we, as a wage that we can't, you know, we can't fulfil. And if it gets to that point, then I think we need to look elsewhere. But if it's reasonable and we can afford it, then for Christ's sake, sign him up. Yeah, I mean, what I would say quickly is like just because he's a Premier League goalkeeper uh, and he's the backup at the moment doesn't mean he's going to be, you know, tear it up in league. But if we sign him, I mean, two words: Will Norris. Kind of the exact same kind of loanee we had a couple of years ago. Didn't have a good, you know, loan here. But let's say we had, we did get him on a permanent. We'd have been, well, as you probably think, screwed because he wasn't good enough for us even in League One. And he's only made three appearances in professional football since his loan here in in two seasons, and they were with Burnley. Um, and I think they were forced as well, as in he came in as cover. So. You know, it's just because we sign him doesn't mean he suddenly become the focal point for the team and a backbone because give him 20 games and all of a sudden he's out of form, then you're back at square one, but with a player that you suddenly spent a lot of money on. So, you know, there, there is, there's caution to signing a loan. There's always caution to signing a loan because it, it's never a guarantee that they'll replicate the form they've got, they've had on loan once they've signed permanently. And you've only got to look at the likes of Jimmy Bullard for that. <laughs> Yeah, that is um, not a good uh, example because yeah, his, his permanent spell wasn't that great. Um, Mark, I'll let you sort of have the final word on this. So if Bloomers, you want to add any more, you can. But um, if Walton doesn't sign permanently, are you going to be happy with Lanky and Holy as second choice? Or do you think we should go into the market? January is a, is a hard market to sign any any player. Like a goalkeeper is going to be Brighton. I think they're looking to loan out another goalkeeper. I think he's six foot eight. Yeah. Um, I, I won't pronounce his name. Sorry for the viewers. Find it. I'll put, put, put a picture of him up in a minute. What's, it, what's um, his first yeah. name? Uh, let me get, get it up quickly. Uh, what's his first name? Sherpen. He's Sherpen, isn't he? Sherpen. S H E R P E N. Yeah. That's the one. That's the one. Yeah, yeah six foot eight. Um, no, I, I think that if we can't sign Walton, and I, and I very much would like us to sign Walton, then I think we need to give Fladke a, a, a chance. Um, you know, he was Golden Glove in League Two last season. I haven't been massively impressed by him, I have to be honest. He doesn't fill me with confidence. That doesn't mean he's not a good player. Um, he's been, you know, playing behind an unsettled side for, you know, for a number of weeks here with, with a lot of changes. I'd like to think, and I've been saying this for years, that good coaching can improve players because, you know, I have seen other teams do that. And I, I don't think we've seen a lot of evidence of that at Ipswich Town over the last three or four years. I can't think of many who improved under Lambert or Cook, really. I'd like to think that with a new setup and, you know, and, and a focus on coaching, that perhaps we could could get more out of Fladke and, you know, he could fulfill his potential because he's obviously got potential here. Uh, you know, in that in that case, 
you know, I probably wouldn't look elsewhere if I'm brutally honest. I think January is a really dodgy month to sign players because you're only going to get the players who are out of contract for whatever reason or clubs don't really want. I don't think the choice is going to be that great. I'm not sure that we would get a significant upgrade in either of those two. So, you know, in terms of continuity and consistency, I'd stick with Fladley and Holy and, and work with them to the end of the season. I wouldn't go looking elsewhere. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, at the end of the day, what 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 does, what does that say to Claggy and Holy if you sign someone in January and then he gets injured and then you got to bring him in? Like, it's hardly giving him the glowing recommendation, is it? At the end of the day, we signed Claggy in the summer, expecting him to be our number one, and that hasn't happened yet, which is fine. These things happen, but um, I think the time would be to just stick with him if, if Walton does go back. And, and look, we've got a new managerial um, team that will hopefully give him some confidence and the team winning should give him confidence as well. So, mm-hmm. so yeah, let's try and get the most out of him rather than shop elsewhere. Definitely. Well, Mark Bloomers, thank you very much for joining me. Uh, let us know in the comments, get involved, what your feelings on Christian Walton, possibly going back to Brighton and may not even be a town player in the long term. We'll have to wait and see on that. And I'll be back for another video very soon. Bye-bye for now. <laughs>